Welcome everybody. We will start in about two minutes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our special Android SDK office hours. And today we have a live Q&A and code demo for you. I'm Ricky, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. So before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items to go over. Uh, you are currently being placed in listen-only mode, and this session is actually being recorded. So you'll receive an email in about a week, and that email will have a link to the recording as well as other resources. So uh, let's go into this. This is a live Q&A. So please be sure to use the Q&A button at the end of your screen to ask questions at any time. Feel free to ask questions as they occur to you. We'll either answer those questions uh, live via the Q&A box or we'll acknowledge them and provide answers after the live demo. And to keep a copy of your questions and answers. You, you'll just simply right click on them, hit copy, and then you'll save them to your desktop or document of choice. And uh, lastly, we have a quick poll that will appear on your screen in just a moment. So please take time to answer those questions. It will be very helpful for us to understand where you are in your development process. And this poll will allow us to customize content for this webinar and also for future webinars. So please look out for that poll. Let's talk a little bit about the team on the webinar today. As I mentioned, my name is Ricky, and I'm actually a product manager here at DocuSign. I'm here with Persona. He's our uh, DocuSign engineering manager for not only the apps, but also the SDK. We have Naveen. He's our senior Android engineer who specializes in the SDK. And we're accompanied by Matt King, He's a development support engineer, and he's going to be helping run the demo and fielding questions throughout the webinar. So in terms of agenda today, we're going to give you an introduction to our Android developer tools. And I'm going to speak briefly about some considerations for choosing the Android SDK over some of the other DocuSign tools that we have available. Prasanna is going to go through a live demo of the SDK and he's going to present to you a sample app that we built to showcase what the SDK can do. Uh, we have Naveen, who will walk you through the code and tell you how that sample app was built. And then finally, we'll have Matt and Naveen really help you with any questions that you have on your projects, and we'll help you uh, address those in the session as well. So pretty much that's it for housekeeping. Uh, we can get into the content here. And so, as everybody knows, DocuSign uh, supports a wide range of developer tools, and uh, we generally have products and features throughout the agreement cloud. So there are various APIs that are set up to support those tools. 
such as Clank, Room, IDB. But today we're going to focus on our signature product and the REST API for that area. And so if you're building your own application, and let's just say you have your own Android app, and you need to integrate this agreement technology, I mean, you have a few choices. You can directly integrate with the REST API and build your application directly. Or if you need more scaffolding and tools, you can certainly use one of our SDKs. And if you are an Android developer, traditionally you have looked to the Java SDK. But now you have a choice. We've launched the Android SDK. Uh, the iOS one has been out for a number of years now. And so <laughs> you're able to directly integrate with some of the components that we have. And to show you how to get access to this, uh, the Android SDK is available on developers.docusign.com. This is our development site where you can sign up for an account. You will hit APIs, navigate to the REST API section under eSignature. From there, there is a section entitled SDK and Tools. You click that, and on the far right-hand side, you'll find Android. When you go into the Android area, you'll have content on Android, but you'll also have access to the Git repository. This Git repository is important because first of all, it's the code, and also it has the sample app that we're gonna actually go over today. So that's where to get it. And you're probably wondering between these two, like what are some of the considerations? How is the SDK different from the actual REST API? In which case, when would you use one application over the other? There are various dimensions to really look at this, and we'll go over a few of them now. The main dimension here, the main difference between the two is just the core technology. If you're looking at the Android SDK, this is a Kotlin-based library with uh, native signing components. The REST API is really just REST APIs that you're gonna have to access through your Java language service layer. So fundamentally, the technology is very different. In terms of full REST e-signature support, uh, the Android SK will not have full support. Uh, we have uh, a focus on template and envelope, envelope driven workflows. The REST API is much more comprehensive, but it too does not have so full support. There are certain things that the SDK has that are exclusive to the SDK, namely offline signing and management endpoints here. So offline signing, as I mentioned, is exclusive to the Android SDK. So if you have a need to collect signatures without connectivity or to deal with any sort of uh, spotty cellular connections, you're, you're gonna have to use the Android SDK as the REST signature, uh, the e-signature REST API will not have access to that capability. And then as for native signing UI components, the Android SDK will provide you the component tree that we use in our native apps. And uh, it will be fully native versus the the signature REST API will provide you uh, web views that you can embed into your application. And mostly you're gonna to have to build your own custom UI to coordinate that signing function. In terms of uh, tab support, if you have very sophisticated agreements uh, with maybe some of the more advanced tags, uh, you might not be able to use the SDK. The SDK is really designed for the majority of users that have the most common tags that we support. So if you're uh, looking to create agreements, you're looking to do offline signing, we support the signature, initials, name, date, the text boxes, check boxes, company, radio buttons, et cetera. The REST signature API will actually have much more uh, coverage in terms of tags and it's much more comprehensive. Finally, if you are a Xamarin shop and you use Xamarin to build hybrid apps, well, we have a direct uh, integration with that and we have built bridges to, to really support the Xamarin uh, ecosystem versus the REST API, it has less direct support. So those are some of the considerations and how they're different. Now let's actually look at whether the SDK is right for your business. So when you're evaluating a library for your application, you just want to know that the DocuSign team has invested heavily into the Android ecosystem. So we have expertise that spans multiple platforms, such as the mobile devices, Chromebooks, tablets, and Xamarin. And we also provide uh, tools to third-party developers, and that's why we're here today. 
you know, there's the Java SDK and there's the Android SDK. The same stack that supports these tools are the ones that work on our regular mobile app. And so we share technology, we share best practices. So rest assured that this platform is extensively supported. You should be, feel confident in really integrating this technology. So that's one consideration. The next one is really just the key value props. You should really look at this from your end user standpoint and also your own personal standpoint as a developer. You know, if you're looking to provide a quality experience, streamline workflows or customize branding, really those are the benefits that you will provide your end user. And from a developer standpoint, really it's just a faster integration and you can get set up with your first project in a matter of weeks as opposed to months with the REST API. It's secure and reliable and we use the same security standards that we use for our regular mobile app and agreement cloud. And finally, it's free to use. So really there is no additional cost to use this technology. The GitHub repository and the SDK is freely available for download. And as for the features that are supported, uh, this is a few that we're gonna name off right now. We have in the, you know, later in the presentation, we're gonna actually go through some of these and give you examples of how this works. But all of the features really start with the authentication process. So whether you have shared credentials for your organization or your individual users have their own DocuSign account, you're gonna to wanna to authenticate not only user settings and get access to all your agreements. You're gonna to wanna to cache those agreements and store them on your device, pre-fill them. And so you can uh, use your customer records and populate some of the, the information on your agreements before you have them signed. You can compose and build agreements, whether programmatically or through templates, you can fill out those templates either in person, programmatically. You can sign them. So you can borrow the signature palette that we have available in our regular mobile apps. You can use this under different connectivity environments, whether it's online, offline, gray zone. You can reliably get signatures with our SDK. And you can customize and look and feel so that feels much more native and can brand it to your own experience whether it be custom logos, suppressing DocuSign branding, colors, fonts, and call to actions. So quite a, quite a few uh, features that are available right now. And I really wanted to encourage the developers on this call to think about the realm of possibilities with our technology. You know, we're in an age where mobile provides not only a convenient screen, but it also opens up a range of possibilities to better service our customers and to really look at more innovative applications. So regardless of what industry or vertical you focus on, you really have the opportunity to take the SDK and rethink your approach to agreements. You know, you can think about how you can automate processes, improve you know, customer service, think about how you can maybe facilitate in-person business transactions. And you can think about this across multiple verticals and industries. You know, a lot of our customers rely on us for signing reliability, whether it be the additional telemetry we provide from our SDK or you know, dealing with the connectivity issues that I mentioned. So our SDK really has helped cus customers and companies that are large and small, and we really helped them facilitate their agreement uh, applications and, and build out those use cases. So now let's see what that looks like in a live example with our sample app. I'm gonna turn it over to Prasanna to go over a live demo. Thank you, Ricky. Um, let me quickly share my screen. Okay, I don't know if you all can see my screen. Um, so here um, is a sample app that we have built uh, to showcase uh, DocuSign mobile SDK integration to our developers. Um, so today um, I'm going to walk you through the sample app which showcased, uh, you know, it, it'll actually show you what the experience would look like if you integrate um, the DocuSign mobile Android SDK into your own mobile app. Um, so um, in, in today's use case, I'm actually going to walk you through an offline signing experience. Um, so um, this is a sample app that portrays the use case of a wealth management company's mobile app that is used by the investment manager to manage their portfolios. So um, um, in this demo, I would be imitating an investment manager, um, Olivia, who is reaching out to his customer, Tom Wood, to um, 
get the investment uh, agreement signed. So firstly, I'm going to um, log in um, to the app. So I'm currently uh, connected, so as you can see, um, so I click on login, um, I enter the credentials. And All right, so um, once you log into the app, as you can see, um, I have uh, two clients, Tom Wood and Andrea. And then um, I also have their agreements uh, yet to be signed. Um, and then also I have two other tabs, which is the templates. So these are the, the signing agreement templates that I'm going to use um, to sign uh, the investment agreement. And then I also have another tab called um, Pending Sync. So this tab is going to show you envelopes that are signed in offline mode, but are yet to be synced to the DocuSign servers. Um, so let me go through this uh, example. Um, so imagine I'm, you know, I'm an investment manager, Olivier. Um, I have my client, Tom Wood, who is interested in investment, uh, investing in our portfolio. Um, so, you know, he decides to uh, invest. So as a part of the, the process, I need to get an agreement signed from Tom Wood. So um, I'm having everything, all the information available of Tom Wood. Now I'm going to reach out to him to get that agreement signed. Um, today, you know, Tom Wood is at the golf course. So I need to be uh, prepared to, you know, sign the agreement even when I don't have connectivity. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to templates. I'm going to use the first uh, uh, signing agreement template. So I'm going to download that. So I just tap download. And as you can see, it's downloading the template. Um, um, so the agreement is uh, ready to be, you know, use the template. So it's uh, downloaded and cached on the device. So now I go back. Um, I'm actually now, imagine I'm at the golf course. I don't have connectivity. So I'm going to turn off uh, the Wi-Fi to simulate that. Um, now I don't have any connectivity whatsoever. Um, here I am with Tom Wood. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start the, the agreement signing process, right? So um, here's the portfolio. Um, and, you know, uh, this is the, uh, the, the amount he's, he's planning to invest. So I'm going to let him view the agreement. Um, this is the client number. So he can decide to change the amount if he need, but for now he's going to go with three hundred thousand dollars. And then once he's um, ready, I'm just going to click Invest in Portfolio, and that'll prompt me to choose an agreement that I'm going to use. So as you can see, this is the template that I downloaded um, uh, for signing. So I'm going to select that, and um, as you can see, all that information about the my client has been populated here so tom wood i'm the host olivia lee and then i'm an um, in-person signer so that's what it's uh, you know the role is and then i also have a recipient jack doe who's going to get a carbon copy um so he doesn't have to sign but he is scheduled to get a carbon copy so now that I'm, I'm ready to get the agreement signed i'm going to start the signing ceremony and um, this is a, a standard screen that prompts you to start the signing ceremony. So I click begin signing. And as you can see, um, this is the template that I downloaded and it has been pre-populated with all the information about the customer. So you can use, you can accomplish the same thing in your own mobile app using our APIs where you can, uh, you know, pre-fill the envelopes, uh, you know, using, you know, standard information that you need uh, and then you know when, when you are ready to sign you know everything is filled up for you and then you know you have all these tabs so you have pretty much his address um, all kinds of tabs that we support currently uh, and then I also have the tab to sign so now I present this to Tom he's going to tap on sign and now you can see this is actually a signature palette that uh, that comes up um, so Tom is going to sign and he finishes signing. Um, and as you can see, uh, his signature is already, you know, uh, embedded in that agreement. And I'm going to click finish. 
So Tom would has, you know, uh, finished signing the ceremony. Um, now, as you can see, um, the, the document is already signed. Um, it's available locally on your device, but now it needs to be synced to DocuSign server. So you get a message here saying, hey, signing is completed. Please remember to sync your envelope. So now if I go to the pending uh, tab, you can see that the agreement that I signed is not yet synced to the server. Um, so I'm going to um, go back to the office now, and then I'm going to enable Wi-Fi. So that's what I'm going to do now. Put enable connectivity. Now that I'm fully connected, I'm going to hit sync. So this is going to sync that envelope that just got signed in uh, offline mode and the agreement is synced. So this is a, 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 a typical scenario where I, as an investment manager, was able to go to a, a client who is in the middle of a golf course uh, where there's no connectivity, get the signature and have that envelope sent. Um, so um, now that we witnessed the demo, uh, let me actually recap and walk you through what happened behind the scenes. Um, let me uh, switch to my slides. Let's go through what happened and how you can go about enabling DocuSign um, using the mobile Android SDK, right? Um, first, you need to get um, authenticated uh, into the DocuSign uh, environment for you to enable uh, agreement signing. So for that, um, you know, um, you have a couple of options, but typically, um, you know, you can use OAuth based as um, authentication, or you could be, use also something like um, JWT token based authentication. Um, let's say you have a, a single account that you want to use for all your uh, users. So you can go around, go around the route of using like a service account based authentication. Uh, so once you have authenticated, you authenticate into the SDK. Next, um, you know, as you can see, what happened was we actually downloaded um, the the signing agreement um, in our device. Um, so mobile Android SDK provides you with uh, APIs to um, download and cache any templates that you you, you tend to use uh, you want to use um, for your signing ceremonies. Um, and let's say you let you, if you're an investor like me, you want to go. Of, uh, you know, out in the field, um, your, your chances are you might be in areas where there's no connectivity. And uh, for that, you actually go into, uh, and you know, that's what I simulated using the offline scenario. Now, um, you know, the, the template is pre-filled with all the information. Uh, and um, um, I presented the agreement to the uh, customer uh, or my client, Tom Wood, to sign. Um, the signing ceremony happened on the device in an offline mode, no connectivity whatsoever. Uh, and then when I'm back in my office, I was able to sync that envelope to the server. So this is a, 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 an example of an offline use case that, that, uh, that you can use. Um, we have customers who are actively using this use case. So this is typically the workflow that you would want to use um, to go about uh, integrating mobile Android SDK. Um, with this, I will actually hand over um, to Naveen, who is going to walk through the bits and pieces of code that was used to enable this experience. Um, let me post signing. All right. Naveen, over to you. Yep. Thank you, Prasanna. All right, uh, let's dive into the code to see DocuSign SDK API usage in this TGK Capital Sample application. To use any DocuSign API, we need to initialize the SDK and then authenticate it with DocuSign. So how do we initialize DocuSign SDK? So invoke DocuSign.init method and provide details like integrator key, client secret, and redirect URI. So this will create the DocuSign instance. These details can be obtained from developer sandbox when you created the DocuSign account. So when you are working on the de demo environment, you can set the environment to demo here. But once the app is ready to release, 
point this environment environment to prod environment. So now that we have initialized the SDK, so we can also set the branding for your app. So DocuSign has its own UI, but if you want to customize the DocuSign UI to match with your app UI, so we provided get appearance delegate API. So get the instance of appearance delegate, and you should be able to set action bar color, status bar color. You can also set the logo of your app. You can control the visibility of DocuSign logo in the toolbar during signing ceremony. And you can also set the color to the buttons that are displayed in DocuSign UI. So now that we have initialized and set the branding, let's see how we can authenticate with DocuSign. So we need to get the instance of authentication delegate. And once you get the authentication delegate instance, invoke login API and provide the listener, which is authentication listener. And once the user enters the credentials, if the authentication is successful, you will receive on success callback method in this listener, indicating that authentication has been successful. In case, if the authentication is not successful, you will receive on error method in the callback listener with the details of the exception. Okay, now that we have authenticated with DocuSign, so let's access and download the templates. So in order to see what are the templates that, that are configured in the DocuSign account, SDK provides get templates API. So get the instance of template delegate from DocuSign SDK and invoke get templates API. So you can provide a template list listener in which on complete method will be invoked with the list of templates. So this templates will include the template IDs of what are all the templates that are configured. Similarly, if there is any error occurred while fetching the templates, on error callback will be invoked with the exception. So now that we retrieve the list of templates, so let's cache the template. So SDK provides an API called cache template and you provide template ID here and the template cache template listener. So once the caching is successful, on complete method will be called with the template details. Similarly, if there is any error, you will receive on error callback method with the details of the exception. So now that we cache the template, so we can prefill the template with the information of the available in the app. So for that, we have provided DS envelope defaults class. So where you can pre-populate the uh, tag values and uh, uh, recipient details. For example, if you see, these are the details where we would like to populate in the document during signing. So for that, get the instance of uh, DS envelope defaults and you can provide recipient defaults. So what is this recipient defaults? It is an array list of recipients and you can pass the information as shown here. So in this case, we have two recipients. One receives the carbon copy and we provide the details of the re recipient who who needs to receive the carbon copy. And similarly, we have the in-person signer, in this case, Tom Wood. We provide the details of the signer and the host in this recipient default object. And we need to provide the role name. So this role name need to match with the role name that we defined in the template. Similarly, for the carbon copy recipient as well. So once we define the recipient defaults, we need to set the tab value defaults. So what is the use of this tab value defaults? As mentioned here, we'd like to get the custom information from the app to be displayed in the document. So here, this tab value defaults is a hash map, which accepts the tag labels and the corresponding values. So each and every field that is displayed in the document during signing will have a data label associated with it. In order to find the data label, you can find the data label in the uh, template. 
when you selected the tab. So once we provide the tab value defaults for the fields which we would like to prefill the template, we will create the envelope defaults object. So now that we have prefilled the template, let's initiate the signing ceremony. So in order to initiate the signing ceremony, SDK provides an API called use template offline in which you provide the template ID and pass the envelope defaults, which we just created earlier. So this will pre-populate all the fields with the information we provided in the envelope defaults. And then user can start the signing process. So once the signing is successful, you will receive on complete callback method with the envelope ID details, indicating that success, uh, signing is successfully completed. If there is any error during signing ceremony, you will receive on error callback with the template exception details. Similarly, in the during signing, if the user decides to cancel the signing ceremony, you will receive on cancel uh, callback method. Okay, now that we have finished signing, we need to sync the envelope to DocuSign. So syncing can be done when the network is available. So in order to sync the envelope, retrieve the instance of envelope delegate from DocuSign SDK and invoke sync envelope method. So you can invoke sync envelope method if you want to sync an individual envelope in which you can provide envelope ID and a sync envelope listener. So once the syncing is successful, you'll receive on success callback method with the local locally cached envelope ID in it and the server envelope ID as well. So this is the envelope ID that is retrieved from DocuSign server. So if there is any error during syncing process, you will receive on error callback method with the details of the exception. And, it, and also it provides the local envelope ID in it. So this is the API that you can use if you want to sync an individual envelope. But let's say you have some envelopes and you want to sync all the envelopes at once. We also provide an API for that, which is sync all envelopes. This API will sync all the envelopes that are signed. So you can provide the sync all envelopes listener here in which you will receive on complete callback method once the syncing has been successfully completed. In case if there are any envelopes that are failed, then you will receive the list of envelope IDs that are failed. So that way you will know what envelopes are failed during syncing process, and you can resync those envelopes later. But usually if the syncing is successful, this list will be null or empty. So similarly, if and uh, error occurred during the syncing process, you will receive on error callback method with the de exception details. So during syncing process for each and every envelope that is synced, you will receive on envelope sync success, indicating when each envelope is successful. It also provides the locally cached envelope ID of that particular envelope, along with the server envelope ID that is synced with DocuSign. So similarly, you will also get the on envelope sync error callback method with the details of the sync exception, indicating the detail, reason for the failure of the syncing for that particular envelope. So yeah, this is the overview of the APIs uh, that are provided in DocuSign SDK. So SDK also provides API for embedded signing ceremony as well. And also, if you don't want to use uh, uh, templates, SDK also provides an API where you can create the envelope from scratch as well. Okay, let's see what comprises the SDK. So for integration with DocuSign SDK, you can add it as a dependency in your app build.gradle, like for using any uh, native library. So currently SDK supports native apps, which are written in Kotlin or Java. SDK also provides uh, support for Xamarin-based Android applications. So 
SDK provides Nugget packages, which are hosted in Nugget repository, which you can uh, download those Nugget packages and uh, you integrate that with Xamarin-based Android applications. So currently, SDK supports Android versions 5 and above. And it, it supports all tablets and devices as well. So coming to the documentation. So we have the detailed readme for which provides integration steps, how to integrate with DocuSign. And we hosted that in a public GitHub. So it, that GitHub will also include the API reference documentation for the SDK. And the sample app, which we just show, just demoed, is also published in the uh, public GitHub. Okay, with that, I'll hand over to Matt for questions. Over to you, Matt. Thank you, Naveen. Um, so we did have a couple of questions come in. Um, one of the last ones that we just saw, I believe that you just, uh, uh, you get the majority of the answer on that. Um, one of the audience was wondering uh, where they could go specifically for any kind of detailed documentation or uh, any kind of other cookbooks or any other like how to's or code examples aside from this one. Um, could you show us where uh, these exist on the GitHub? Yeah, sure, uh, Matt. Um, right now we hosted our uh, sample application and the detailed readme in uh, GitHub. So the link is provided uh, down below the additional resources section. So it is uh, at uh, github.com slash docusign slash mobile Android SDK. So detail uh, API documentation is provided in, uh, in that link as well. Awesome, thank you, sir. Okay, so um, we do have a couple other questions that came in. So we'll just go ahead and start cycling through these. And then uh, we'll, uh, if anybody has anything that comes to mind whenever we're talking, uh, feel free to go, to go ahead and submit any follow-ups you have to the Q&A box. Um, and we'll start answering these as they are coming in. Um, so first up, uh, could you give us any advice on, um, uh, more specifically in the background, um, how are you able to integrate with users that may have their own individual accounts, but they don't necessarily want to give your system their own personal login information? Yeah, that's a great question, Matt. So currently, SDK provides two login methods. One is login with auth-based authentication. So this authentication uh, presents the UI as shown in the demo where the user will enter the DocuSign account credentials. But there might be a use case where a user doesn't want to provide uh, or enter the credentials. So in that case, they can use our second login API, which, which accepts the access token. So this access token can be generated using JWT grant authentication. So, but this implementation of generating JWT authentication needs to be implemented at your at the app's backend side. So they will integrate with DocuSign and uh, implement the uh, JWT-based authentication. And once you retrieve the access token, so the uh, app server will pass the token to the uh, app, which in in turn will talk will uh, call SDK's login API with the access token, which is retrieved from the uh, app's backend. Okay, awesome. All righty. Um, so next up, uh, do you have any uh, specific resources or any particular channels that you prefer to uh, to customers or end users to reach out to you guys with questions? Sure. So for common queries, um, you can refer to support section on the GitHub at the link provided in the developer resources. For additional help, you can raise an issue on the GitHub with relevant details and the SDK team actively monitors it and responds to those issues. Okay, excellent. Um, so we saw earlier in the, the presentation, you were talking about the specific tab types that are supported by the, the offline components of this SDK. Uh, what is it that's going to happen if I try to uh, download or cache a template that has an unsupported tab type on it? Yeah, great question, Matt. 
So in case it SDK doesn't support any tag type, then we, in the listener, on error callback will be invoked with the details of the error. So it includes both the error code and the uh, error message indicating that certain tag type is not supported. Okay, uh, and there's a there's a clear indication of like which type of tab it is that's causing the problem. Yes. Excellent. That is good to know. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, some of our folks have noticed that uh, we have had several different SDKs that have come down the pipeline specifically for uh, Android applications. Um, could you go into any of the specific differences between the uh, the Android applications and the standard uh, uh, native SDK? Sure. Right now, the DocuSign application provides more comprehensive coverage of the tags and envelope types. In fact, the app actually uses the SDK as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I would also add to that right now, there, there are certain tag types that we don't support just because they've been sparsely used. But uh, if any of the audience members have any suggestions for what to look at, or if you uh, have any suggestions for what to place on the roadmap, we would definitely uh, be open to that. And so the, the goal is really to support our customers and make sure uh, we have extensive support. And uh, the only reason it hasn't been supported is just those, those items have not been heavily requested. So they're more of the typical advanced tag types that we have in our app, but not in the SDK. But ultimately the goal is to make sure the app and the SDK are at parity because the app actually uses the SDK. Okay, that's also good to know. Thank you, Ricky. Okay, so the next question. Um, one of our users is asking whether or not it's possible to get rid of some of the landing pages or some of the extra DocuSign related screens that they don't necessarily need within their mobile application. Um, is that something we can do? Yeah, sure, Matt. Like SDK provides some settings API where you can bypass or hide some screens. Yeah, and so we, we have a standard workflow for how to collect agreements, whether to be presenting the order of the recipients and consumer disclosures. But obviously you can suppress that depending on your application. We do have customers that don't need to uh, coordinate and facilitate the, the uh, signing among different parties in one session. So they prefer to just suppress some of those screens. And so we do have APIs to do that. Okay, excellent. Um, so we do have a couple other common questions. Um, it looks like we've uh, we've exhausted the ones that have been submitted by the audience. Um, so if anybody does have any additional thoughts or questions while uh, we're going over some of our common FAQs, uh, feel free to submit any uh, thoughts that you might have or any suggestions, uh, and we'll go ahead and address them as they're coming in. Um, that being said, um, one of the issues commonly seen is regarding to uh, security questions being displayed like before the start of a signing session. Um, could you go over any common reasons why those wouldn't necessarily show up? Yes. Security questions are only compatible with embedded signing. So you will want to double check your envelope settings in the DocSign web portal. So when sending an uh, envelope, in a uh, DocSign web portal, make sure the setting enabled, like in-person in, uh, in ID check question. So make sure to enable that setting in the web portal. Yeah, and you know, just to clarify what embedded signing means, that, that really is just the, the online signing session coordinated by the web browser or web view. And so there's two modes, there's the offline version of it, which is completely native, and then there's the online version that you would typically use on a a, a browser. And so the security questions are compatible with the online version. Okay, so what you're saying then is that the uh, the other uh, questions or the other authentication types wouldn't show up because they require you have an internet connection uh, where we have this alternate uh, in-person ID check that uh, works without uh, the online component. Yeah, that's right. Okay, awesome, that's excellent to know. Um, another common question, um, using the use online templates method, uh, what are any, or what are some potential reasons that it would come back with an error indicating there were no templates found? Yeah, this error indicates um, that reference template is not available. So you want to cache the template before invoking use template online method. So SDK provides cache template API 
and you can work before using this use template online API. Okay. Yeah, and I would say another common issue when uh, developers are trying to cache their templates is uh, they generally have to make sure they're they're pointed at the right environment. And so, you know, if you're you know going to production and you're you're getting getting ready to go live with your application, there's a couple things things you have to check and really make sure that the environment is is pointed uh, to the the proper server. And so that's uh, a common issue that we've seen. Oh, definitely, definitely. We see uh, uh, customers doing that support all the time. Okay, uh, next question. The the SDK examples that we've seen today, uh, they've been highly focused on uh, most of the offline components. Um, do we have any complete code examples that would show um, how to implement like embedded or remote signing using like online components or like en or envelope defaults? A great question, Matt. So in today's demo, we have showcased the use case of uh, template flow with offline signing only. But uh, in order to see the usage of online signing or embedded signing, uh, our uh, SG, uh, TGK sample application uh, has the uh, code to demonstrate the uh, embedded signing as well. Okay, excellent. That's good to know. And is it also in that same um, uh, Android repository? Yes, it is in the same uh, DocSign SDK repository in GitHub. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, why would we be receiving an error message indicating only one role name is allowed for an in-person recipient? Yeah, uh, this error indicates uh, that the template was not set up properly. So most probably, uh, we need to set the role uh, for the recipient. So in the template, don't set any values um, in the name, host name, or host email. So recipient values will be pre-filled with the um, DS envelope defaults object from SDK method. Okay. Um, looks like we have another question that came in. Um, just offhand before I answer this one, uh, this SDK does support like uh, doing uh, user info lookup calls uh, as part of the OAuth request. Yeah, uh, we do uh, uh, invoke user info call, um, but that was uh, that will be used only once uh, for the very first time uh, when you are uh, trying to log in, and then subsequent calls it won't it won't fetch the user info details. Okay, um, so Kat, then to answer your question, um, usually how it works is that, um, and this is true for both the demo and the production environments, um, the, the common practice is that once the actual um, OAuth token is created, you do what's referred to as a user info lookup call. Um, and basically what that does is you target it at uh, either demo or production, and the call will then return a list of any accounts and the base URLs that are associated with the, the, those accounts. Um, that you would be able to access with a given OAuth token. So for example, um, if I personally had, you know, three different accounts in production that were on three different servers, but um, they were all accessible by the same user. Um, when I do that user info lookup call, it's going to come back and tell me the specific site for all three of them. And it's also going to tell me which one it should log into by default. Got it. That's great, man. Okay, next up, do, could you get, uh, give us any specific reasons why when using a template, uh, some of the values wouldn't necessarily show up during the signing session? Yeah, this might be a problem when uh, you match the uh, tabs to the wrong recipient. So most of the cases, um, so when you are uh, defining the tabs, uh, in a particular template, you will be selecting the previous uh, recipient. So when you have multiple recipients defined in the template, make sure uh, the tabs are associated with the right recipient. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, we see that in support pretty consistently, usually uh, when using uh, composite templates. Um, the best mm -hmm. advice that I could give you whenever running into that problem is that um, what you can do to, to make sure that the, your template roles and the recipient information are all in alignment um, is you can actually create the envelope instead of just immediately sending out. Uh, what you can do instead is create it as a draft. 
Um, one of the less common known things is that by default, uh, recipient roles, so they're, they're set to merge whenever an envelope shifts from, being a dra uh, from going to like a draft to a sent status. Um, so there, if there is a problem, uh, whenever you open up the draft within DocuSign.com, you can actually see all of the individual recipient roles that were created. And you can actually just literally point out which ones um, have different role names or which one have like a different name or email address combination. Um, because if any of those things are out of alignment, then chances are they are going to do some, uh, or they're going to make your tabs behave a little weird. Yeah, uh, even uh, in SDK, when using the envelope defaults, uh, Matt, uh, so we need to create the recipient defaults and provide the right uh, role name. So that should match the role name that we define in the template. Exactly. Okay, so next question. Um, how can I go about removing the mobile friendly toggle that's uh, displayed during online signing? Yeah, if, if you want to disable a mobile friendly toggle button, um, uh, we need to turn that setting uh, in the uh, DocSign web portal. So you, you can navigate to signing settings and then uh, disable the option, allow recipients to view mobile friendly documents with responsive signing. Right. That is primarily a embedded signing feature right now. And so it, as uh, Naveen mentioned, you're going to have to configure that off on your admin portal. And, it, and typically it can be configured off on an envelope level as well, but uh, you, know, you should generally just turn it off for the entire account if you don't want to see it. Right. We can configure that for a particular template as, as well, the same setting. Right. Excellent. That's all good to know. Um, next question, uh, does the SDK currently support password protective PDFs? Uh, no, Matt. Uh, right now, Android SDK does not support password protected PDFs. Um, in fact, not only uh, Android SDK, uh, so DocuSign uh, overall does not support password protected uh, PDFs at all. Uh, you will need to remove uh, PDFs password protection or encryption before using your document. Okay. And then if we do try to use a password protective PDF, do we just get like a standard um, uh, document conversion failure? Yeah, uh, then uh, we'll get our uh, error callback method with the details of the error uh, and the error code. Uh, so yeah, you, you, should, you should be able to receive the error uh, details uh, in the callback listeners. Okay, excellent. Uh, next question, uh, why would a user see an error stating that the user account doesn't allow offline usage? Yeah, in DocSign web portal, uh, you can navigate to settings and then uh, you can select signing settings, make sure uh, the setting um, allow offline signing on a mobile device is enabled. Okay, so it sounds like there's a couple of account level settings that uh, can have an impact here. Is that right? Yeah, 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 definitely, man. Yeah, I would actually say uh, the offline feature right now is is generally packaged under Business Pro and Enterprise Pro, and so if you want to send uh, agreements that are compatible with offline, you you have to generally be on one of those plans. And then there's also some settings that you'll need to make sure you check on your account level. So uh, before you start caching those uh, templates, you'll, you'll make sure that your, your plan is enabled for offline signing and your account has, has not turned it off. Okay, that's also good to know. Um, so looking here, it, uh, it looks like that's about it for questions. Uh, and with that, uh, we can go ahead and end the Q&A portion of this presentation and I will hand it back over to you guys. All right, so that's all the time we have for questions. And uh, if we haven't addressed any of your questions or if you think of new questions, you can certainly email those to developers at drsign.com. And this is the team that will follow up with you after today's webinar. Uh, separately, you can also join our next uh, North American API office hours on June 15th at 9 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, sorry, a.m. Pacific time. Or you can post your questions on Stack Overflow what you want to do is tag them with the, the DocuSign API tag. And so you're going to get a community response there. 
So we also have additional Android resources that you should be aware of. We have Stack Overflow, we have GitHub uh, issues, we have our sample apps that we talked about, as well as uh, various blogs that have been published. So definitely check those out. So finally, I uh, wanna say thank you to everybody. Please note that you're gonna receive a survey at the end of the webinar. We appreciate uh, if you help by sharing your feedback. We can also share suggestions for any future topics that you would like us to cover in our bi-weekly API office hours. Uh, I'd like to thank Persona, Naveen, and Matt for the demo and also facilitating the questions. I want to thank Melissa for really organizing this webinar and running our back room. And then finally, uh, thank you to all the attendees for joining us today and have a great day. Thank you, everybody.